So once upon a time in Black entrepreneur history, there was an African-American man named George Lyle. At least that's how I'm going to pronounce it. And he became known as the father of the Black Baptist in the United States of America. Let's get into it. Now, George Lyle was born in the state of Virginia, enslaved in the 1750s. When a slaver let him free, he went on to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ because he felt that God had a call in his life to do so. Now, he started preaching in South Carolina and Georgia. Some slavers would want him to preach and other slavers was like, get out of here. Now, it was when he went to a church called Silver Bluff Church is when he found a church home temporarily. When he would preach there as a minister of the gospel, everyone listened. They loved his understanding of the gospel and they loved his delivery of the word of God. Word spread about his great preaching like wildfire and he would preach to mostly African-Americans. Now, it was already dangerous for black people in the 1700s, but it became even more dangerous during the Revolutionary War. George Lyle became scared that he was going to be re-enslaved, he and his family. African-American Christian preachers could not travel as much as they did during the Revolutionary War because the British were actually in Savannah in the year 1782. So this is when Lyle had to stop preaching at his church, Silver Bluff, and he bounced. The main thing that made him bounce was the fact that he already caught wind that his ex-slaver's family was trying to re-enslave him and his family. So yeah, he was going to get out of there. Why did they want to re-enslave him? Because he felt pity for the British. And of course, they didn't like that too much. So this is when he found a Colonel Kirkland. He was on his way to Jamaica and asked him to loan him $700. And in return, he would become an indentured servant for two years. This would keep him, his wife, and four children from being re-enslaved. Before he left for Jamaica, though, he baptized and mentored four enslaved African-Americans. All this happened in 1784. It was at this point that there was actually the first black leadership and an African-American church body completely. And the first black Baptist independent church was founded on January 20th, 1788. It was out of those four that he baptized. They went on to found that church called first Ryan Baptist church. And then there was another founded called first African Baptist church. These are the first independent black church congregations of America. Now, while in Jamaica, when he got free from his indentured servitude, he co-founded the first black church on the island of Jamaica. They bought three acres of land and the church was built in 1793. He also co-founded schools for their education in conjunction with the churches. About 10,000 people became Christian. That's when he went on a trip to Africa. And this was the first black congregation engaging in missionary work on the continent. All of his travels and all of his spreading of the gospel led him to be named the father of black Baptists. And he was never paid a dime. Afro-Europeans also supported him. Upon his death, he was buried in Kingston, Jamaica in 1826, not knowing how instrumental the black church would be in black America.